Hello and welcome back to Songs of Six. V67. Yes, brothers, yes. I know, normally in the past I would load up the feed with tons of new songs, but I'm doing things a little differently here. I'm spending some time away, and I'm trying to upload here and there. And I've also put a little bit of time into looking at what my city is missing and what V67 has to offer on my own free time. I'm um, building a, a Mevian city on the side, kind of seeing how they work because they seem like they've got some really nice stuff to work with. But with that being said, I have some stuff that I'm missing and I made a few blunders. A few blunders. And if you're a, a Garthemi stan, someone who loves the Garthemis a ton, you probably noticed that I had that little freaking pit for people to get buried into here. That's a big foolish mistake here. I don't need that. These are cannibals. What am I doing? They're cannibal people. So, in order to asphyxiate that problem or alleviate that problem, whatever you want to call it, we're going to build a nice little building for them so they can start cutting up dead bodies and turning them into delicious, delicious Garthemi stew. And uh, we only need about one, uh, as people don't often die. They're not very, very frequently die here. And we could probably build something like this so it doesn't have to be too too extravagant here and we'll put something like that and then put a door and this will be so that these guys will have meat and they'll just fill it up at the food stop whenever someone dies and that's a great part about the Garthimis now the other part the other thing that I'm missing is a shrine we don't have a shrine to a shmalor we need some sh shrines in here I was gonna say shmalors we need some shmalors in here let's get some shmalors uh, I think that would probably be fine to put you can kind of get away with putting them in, like, tucked away between things. At least that's how I see it. Yeah, we might, we might put one in here somewhere. Like this. Just to get a little bit of that religion going. So, what we need to do is we need to focus on moving these janitors in this warehouse out. Kind of fix up this area, make it look better. Get our food situation a little bit better. We've got eight days of food. I'd also like to get some Talapi slaves working at the woodcutter so that we can focus on moving to the iron area. So what we're going to do is we're going to do things very similar to how I used to do them where I just play in the background and I get to a specific point and I'll meet you guys there. And uh, hopefully I get some, some good stuff going and hopefully I don't get raided too hard. Yummers.
All right, here we are. We are back. And if I have random cuts here and there, don't worry. It's just because there's some background noise. I'm going to do my best to cut around it. They're doing some construction upstairs. Uh, all for the greater good of the fiend's life. So if you're worried about any of that stuff in the background, just think it's good for the future of the channel. Regardless, here we are. We have achieved quite a bit in our uh, Garthami City here. And I've realized that V67 like every version before it, is a little bit more challenging than normal. I've actually had to just give things to the enemies, because when you click on this, you can actually see what they are carrying in their army by hovering over them. So let's see this guy run, yeah, one eye. Uh, in the bandits, they basically have about four groups, and you can see these guys have very little training, so these would be good ones to fight, but there's obviously not, they're not coming out. So when they come out, they, they tend to at least have very high training these guys of course are not following that same trend uh, i think that they sit in hiding for quite a bit and then they pop out i think this was one of them who was pretty high training yeah exactly 100 percent archery training uh some of these guys have 90 percent melee training 100 percent melee training and they have full years so these are actually serious groups uh this one specifically here actually came to talk to us and with our 400 or so troops at 40% or so training, they would have died. I promise you. I can guarantee you we would have died. So I ended up submitting some of our leather armor, some cut stone, a little bit of iron, and some furniture. Nothing too serious, because we don't have a lot of stuff. They don't really seem like they want to bully us for too much. But we, we do have to worry about that uh, and start to train more and more troopers. But Garthimi are a snowball race. They can afford to lose early on. But as they go, they, they start to just get so much going for them. They really can't be beaten. And with that, we've also got our cannibal. So you can see I've got zero food. I know a lot of people see this and they go, Well, Fiend, you suck. You're a stinky, stupid, idiot player. Uh, how dare you? I have multiple places that have plenty of food in them. These little food stalls. And I'm also working on that. That's the next step of my master plan. The whole goal was to get the iron set up. For this episode and we have achieved that i also had kind of pushed to get the cut stone and the leather armor because i was convinced that you needed that for the guard post but i was foolish and i forgot that jake actually changed that so guard posts now only cost wood and to upgrade them create a boost you have to add wood cut stone and some leather armor so if we wanted to we could upgrade this one here and it'll give it a 50 percent boost which seems to have increase the range and it's got a whole new design whole new look and everything to it so jake has added all kinds of really great quality of life things and he did actually say this to me when he was talking to me briefly that this whole update was going to be a quality of life update uh, for the most part there's very few things that have actually changed but there are quite a few things pertaining to food pertaining to uh your organization for your city so, for example, fisheries are not as easy to upgrade as they used to be. So, advanced nets prior would have been about maybe 50 or 60 furniture in the same in, uh, in fabric. But now we have to put hundreds and hundreds of materials to this just to get the boost. I'm not quite sure if that is a higher boost. I, I don't remember specifically what V66 had for a boost. But you can see that that is a huge sum of product there to actually just upgrade one of these fisheries. So that's kind of why our fishery situation is low. The ideal situation for me now is to start mining out this area and turn it into Entelome pastures, or sorry, not Entelome, but the uh, Balti Crawler breeders, and we're gonna start filling it up and making meat because that's what they're gonna be here great for. We're gonna be making tons and tons of meat, and we have all of this mountain space to start to get to use so I figured that'd be the best part spot to start here is right here and we're gonna get that going in the next episode but meanwhile in this this whole bit I've been working on getting our introduction into the mountains set up here so we have a couple houses a little stockade a guard post so I like to kind of top them with each other so the jailers here will actually go and collect prisoners but they're not recorded in this system here and actually that reminds me I do need a dungeon I do not have a dungeon for them so we could just go ahead and simply place a small dungeon here um, and I, I like to go for this I've been going for this design here where we would just kind of paint things into the walls 
uh, leaving enough space for things to go through along the wall. So we have some houses, we have a little janitor, a warehouse for all of the needs of this area, and then a cannibal for anyone who gets killed or dies in this area and he, he just doesn't want to get carried across the city. Uh, we have our stone warehouse outside the mine so that these guys will have probably a hauler too right here so that they can grab from here or from the hauler and put it in here and then the masons are making cut stone and then we have a little janitor here and then we're also exporting stone i export it at anything above two we'll sell it and our neighbor is kind enough to buy it for three to four a pop also wood i think a lot of people are going to look at this little building design here i have two wood cutters now and there's 12 workers here not a lot and we have a couple i think about five four uh tilapi slaves working in here or they should be working in here uh, and their current job is to basically keep this up. We've got 22, 22, and that's producing about 50, or sorry, uh, 45 per day. I think that's how that works, yeah. So we're, we're gonna be seeing a decent amount of wood, and the reason why I have that is not just for the furniture, although it is the main reason for it. You can see they're producing over the amount that we need but we also are running out of wood and furniture all the time because we're constantly building new things constantly expanding building these new guard posts which brings me to mind that i think there should be a stone variant uh, especially when wood in this area is so valuable so let me go and check my my neighbor who ujik um a rovi men in here if i go to diplomacy and i go down to resources and i was to sell one piece of wood that's nine dollars and if I was to buy a wood, it's 44. And the last time I checked, it was 80. So it might have been 80 from these guys here. 95 for wood here. And then if I was to sell it, 8. So wood is extremely, extremely expensive now in this type of area. I do my best to read Jake's uh, writing, and I still have not yet to watch the video. It seems like a lot of people had negative impressions of his original uh, views on that because they misunderstand that Jake is not a social media guy he's not he's not much of a recording type person he's a gamer he is a, a person developing a game and he's not really into that stuff so he's not going to be the best at remembering everything neither am I I'm, I'm honestly one of the most everywhere people so I'll be the first to defend him and say that um, I probably should go and watch the video so that I could break it down better in my videos. So that's going to be a goal for mine for the next video, as I've been taking more time in between videos to kind of break break down everything in my current life, work a little bit more towards the channel, etc. And I know people find that shit completely annoying, but I think it's important because Songs of Six is growing and, and Fiend is growing and all this stuff is growing, just like our woods here. And we're trying to make unique individual cities here and, and learn something or two. And I've been learning a lot. I've been learning a lot. Especially about like the, the resources, how you want to manipulate things. Um, I've been a staple fighter for this concept of having every single form of production going on a small scale and then upgrading to a large scale because I've seen firsthand what happens when you do that. Uh, and you start to snowball like nobody's business. So I, I do hi heavily recommend this style of play here. But back onto the topic at hand, you can see this is our small pump city or pump town. So I have these little subsections of town and as they grow, they start to connect and you can see the houses, the Garthimi shaped houses here, these little bug clusters are all around the, the places they, they like to live and work. There's really no reason not to build them like on top of their work sites because they don't care for noise. They have no problem with it. Um, so they can live right on top of the carpenter or they could even live right on top of the woodcutter. The only reason being that they don't is because this nice line of, of fertile ground is actually useful for all of the uh, trees that are growing. And whenever I need a little bit of trees, I'll go in here and I'll actually cut all of the trees like that and then they'll collect those for me. So onto the other parts of the mountain as we've gone along, you can see I started to carve out all of this portion here, a big nice line. And then we've got a couple houses, we've got all of our services, and then we have the ore mine with the guard post and the smelter and the central warehouse for this region. So we have main priority being iron ore, or ore. I always call it iron, it's not actually iron, it's metal. Um, this gets put here 
and then brought right up here and then we have the coal mine straight down the street so these coal miners are actually very very efficient and i need to upgrade this as soon as i can but you can see i'm constantly upgrading and furniture and wood are just super hard to come by in the, in the desert so i'm on i'm on like hard mode definitely hard uh as i said in the beginning I, I kind of underestimated how hard this would be, but I'm doing well on population scale. Uh, I think I'm doing well overall. So we have our coal mine here, filled to the brim, warehouse, janitor, and then a couple houses and the two basic services to keep it up to date. If they need anything, they walk down here uh, and pretty soon they're gonna get their own little food services and all kinds of other things. But you can notice that we don't have any of the actual markets because the market requires furniture and we don't have a lot, so we're not using it. So as we go back to the town, and uh, this is where the uh, smelter is, so just a couple guys here is enough to keep me up on plenty of metal. I never really have to look over there and question if I have good metal. And as Garthimi, usually people say they, they can't do these things. I, I beg to differ. I think that they're doing it quite, quite well. I just have to put at least two more guys to the job that I normally would. So if I put two in a small workshop, I'm putting four now. And I'm getting about the same output as I would normally. Um, and we can see we've got these beautiful little warehouse, our military uh, zones. I went for a bug design. I wanted to have something unique for each of the military houses. Um, because in my opinion, the Garthimi's primary job in life is to train, 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 and die for the cause. And when they die, they get brought over to the janitor, or not the janitor, to this uh, cannibal here. And this cannibal here breaks down their corpse and turns them into delicious meat uh speaking of which we don't have any uh dead or dying corpses but there seem to be quite some problems with exposure i don't know if it's just be simply because i'm in a desert map and during the summer it can be quite bad you start to get 10 to 50 guys dying from exposure at a time so it could be quite some challenge um, to get that going and I think that the main concern or the main solution should be clothing Clothing and also bathing So you can see I've got a bathhouse here. I'm not Positive that this actually helps them cool down. I think this is primarily bathing is just for cleaning But they do get some kind of cooling benefit from water in general So having wells near all of these places is a good idea anyways um, but they still constantly you'll see a guy who's dying from exposure and he'll be sitting in the cannibal uh, and, and it's right outside from the well and i know it's not the hearth because it's 55 plus degrees out here so a lot of the times it's it's definitely the heat so i think that jake may have altered the way the heat works in the desert so if you're playing and you're if you're experiencing a lot of that just be aware that it's probably going to need a lot more clothing and a lot more uh, resources going towards that stuff than you would have prior like you can see, we have our primary giant bug cluster house. We'll probably make a copy of it, plant it like right here. So these are going to be like the the cluster, the hive, and then we'll have a bunch of them in here for all the, the base laborers, all the, the odd jobbers, the random Garthimis. And then we have a new hunter, his little warehouse here. So it says the room is poorly isolated. That's interesting. What do you fucking mean it's poorly isolated? Is it because I have two doors in one building? whatever insulation it says poorly insulated and then the room is poorly isolated if you look underneath the grade there 87 insulation hmm i might have to actually check up on i think that might just be a spelling error on jake's behalf there because if that is saying that that is insulation but isolation at the same time i'm not quite sure what he's going for there. Let's try to cover that up that, that, and move on. Anyways, because these are all beta things. This is nothing that you're going to be seeing in B66, which is extremely solid. If you were to be playing that right now, you'd be having a great time. And I'm having a lot more fun than I would be normally in B67. Uh, having these little breaks in between. Uh, spending the time that I need to with my family and the people that I care about. Or, I say family, mostly my girlfriend and friends stuff like that so kind of taking a break here and there really does help a lot when you come back to this game because it is overwhelming it has always been so if you find yourself you get frustrated and you've been playing too much sex go take a break you know get some water get a shower you stinky bastard but for real though 
this this game can be quite challenging. And as it's getting a little bit more introductive to like logistic systems and services, apparently there's no more access and there's all kinds of things that are changing for us old boomer songs of six players. Um, so the, a lot of the things that I've said in the past just don't make sense or aren't even connected to what I'm currently playing. So we'll continue along though. We've got our tailor here. This tailor, of course, was making the leather armor for the purpose of actually getting the guard post, which I thought I needed to have that for. Uh, turns out I didn't, so I turned it back over to clothing. So they're taking the leather from these hunters, and they're just turning that into clothing, and then whatever spare amount, you can see we don't have any more uh, leather, so that's kind of what's holding them up. And then whatever is left over, they'll, they'll put in and uh, start wearing. Obviously, we're not keeping up with that, but that is okay. I just want to make sure that some people actually have some clothes so we have about 0.65 not too bad roughly 350 clothes in the, the whole city then we've got some more housing we've adjusted what was here this is the janitor and the warehouse I kind of extended and made them look a little better we've got a nice shrine some hearts oh well and then the pottery here the pottery is gonna be a building an interesting building kind of that is gonna be keeping us up to snuff with money so you can see we've got all of our guys and as a matter of fact I want to probably sell over 10% here so that we start to store a little bit um, so whenever we get excess clay these potters are gonna be over here and we don't even need half as many of these guys over here probably like six because think of it like this every girl is worth or every two girl is worth one normal person so you're gonna want at least six if you can have quote-unquote three workers there that's how I break it down so we have this pottery here, they're making pottery goods, and then we're selling that. That's keeping us up financially. I want to make tons of money so we can start importing probably food or livestock just to get ourselves up to where we need to, and then transfer over completely to like bug domination zone. Once once we hit 5,000 or 500 to 1,000, it is just going to be completely steamrolling the game. As Garthumi don't really have any problems into the late game. Early game, they have a lot of problems, and that's kind of why for these first two episodes, I'm bum-rushing my way through them and trying to get this city up and running. As you can see, we've already got 500, and for the most part, quite happy. I've only had one raid, and I had to pay them up, and other than that, there's no riots, there's no unhappiness, everybody is chilling, and all we need to do is focus on getting a little bit more of our material situation situated our situation situated of course I need to situate my situation uh, <laughs> don't mind my my brain things are things are just always all over the place for the old fiend here so uh, sometimes I'm gonna make those mistakes but regardless I appreciate y'all for watching I hope you guys enjoyed these little videos I can't wait to get to the next point because we're gonna start to steamroll we've got some goals to get the Argonosh all kinds of really good stuff and I cannot wait to see how far I can get and I'd also like to show you guys hopefully my Amevian city when I get to it and you can see look at that I love this I was playing on a different city and it saved the paved road as the option that I was using so that I could go back and use it if I was playing that city but no I'm not I'm playing multiple cities at the same time so now you need to fix that Jake get on it I'm just kidding and regardless thank you all and I'll see you in the next one goodbye